Some of my favorite sequences to direct are about the connections between people's eyes. And in many ways, um, this, the opening of this burial sequence is to me a lovely opportunity where I put a lot of time and detail into shooting. It's a lot of setups of glances between characters. Shingen, Mariko, Yukio, Logan, of course, all watching each other, all trying to figure each other out. Let's not leave out Svetlana back there. Each one of these is a setup. Each one of these is a cut. Each one of these has a kind of power, Harada watching from the rooftop, of creating what I think of as a kind of intricate web, a web that, that exists in cinematic terms for me as the kind of connections between people's eyes. And it's really important to me that when action happens in a film, that it not just be physicality and spectacle, but that the story doesn't stop. So that's why, for me, it's very important to try to plant plot points and turnabouts within the action so that it feels not like a film where the drama starts and suddenly there's a lot of loud noise and then the noise ends and it's back to the drama, but that the two are interspersed and interleaved in some way. The opportunities to have humor in the film are important and um, nothing alleviates the kind of um, stress and darkness of a film, or even makes the darkness feel more real and acute than once in a while breaking it up with humor, character, and tangents. In many ways, when I'm blocking a scene, a lot of times what I'm thinking about, at least since I first started directing films, is that one of the things you're always trying to do is to not give everything away right away. When you're designing how a character enters a room or how they approach one another, you want there to be layers so that they have to keep moving around corners or around dividers or objects to reveal things about each other. The first tendency you have when you first start directing films is to kind of put everything in a straight line so that everything your character needs is right where they need it. Sometimes the most interesting thing to do is to make them have to work a little make the actors have to work a little. Very often when you're lifting scenes from a film, and this is the hardest thing sometimes to explain, but it's not really about whether the scene itself works, but it's about the, the, the whole entity and the flow of the film, um, about whether you feel like any serving or the appetizer, the meal, the dessert, something's taking too long. Um, it's a different thing than saying the scene didn't work. It's more saying that you're kind of, you're creating a kind of flow for an audience. And sometimes that flow can be challenging, um, even though the scenes themselves are excellent. One thing uh, that doesn't often get discussed but is very important as you're working on a screenplay and thinking about directing a film is point of view. Point of view doesn't only exist in novels, but it exists in a film. Um, you can have a movie that exists as my film Walk the Line does, for instance, almost entirely with one character. Every scene is with Johnny Cash. If Johnny Cash isn't in that scene, you're not there. And if anything happens with Johnny Cash off camera, then you don't get to see it because you're experiencing the world from his, from his point of view. Um, sometimes in plottier films um, and mysterious films, it's necessary and even really enjoyable to move the camera around and hear what other characters are saying behind some characters' backs to see the plotting going on behind the scenes. To maintain the intensity, um, you don't need scale always. Intensity can also come from the fire in people's eyes. I love rain in films, um, and it's one of the great things you can do on a stage a little easier than sometimes outdoors, which is um, rain is one of these great ways of making movement and light and atmosphere visible. Um, it adds motion and, and slickness and highlights and a kind of dancing quality to the backgrounds. And also, rain comes with lightning, which is also um, I got to play with a lot in an older film I made called Identity with John Cusack and Ray Liotta and a bunch of others um, and um, and really enjoyed the way the gothic nature of rain and lightning and the role it can play in dancing with the music and the role thunder can play almost a musical role in the building of, of um, suspense and excitement in a sequence. The relationship with the composer is a really great one and a really rewarding one for me um, on a film. Marco Beltrami is a wonderful um, composer and someone who really gets what I love um, in film scores and, and has a great way of having a dialogue with, with my films. Um, one of the things I was very after with the music for this film was to 
um, find a way to evoke something other than Japanese. Um, I didn't want the whole score to be an endless kind of Japanese restaurant. Um, I wanted it to be, in a way, a Western, because I felt like I was making a Western. Samurai films are very much Westerns in the American sense. Uh, uh, Westerns are very much like samurai films. So when I sat down to make this film, the way I thought about it was a Western, and here his theme is soaring at this point. So rather than making um, a Japanese-infused score that every instrument and every idea is somehow Japanese, um, at peak moments like that, you've got things as un-Japanese as a harmonica um, getting played at full blast because I think we're as much making a film with ties into Westerns and spaghetti Westerns as we are into Japanese cinema. And I didn't want the film to feel as I said, like one of those movies where whenever you cut to Japan, you're playing kind of um, massage or sushi restaurant music. Um, I feel like that we've gotten past that. The, the kind of multiculturalism of the world has gotten past that, and many cinematic traditions can speak to each other at the same time. My favorite action films are westerns, cop movies, great films from the past and present, but always with strong character lines. And it's the reason I haven't played in the sandbox even sooner in the world of tentpole films is that I'm very shy about wading into a world in which the only way I'm holding the audience's attention is through sound and fury. Um, to me, it's my own attraction to filmmaking is these kind of quiet moments and quiet scenes in which the power between people's eyes and the connections between characters, even comic book characters, Who's Gene? Are holding the film together. As you would think making a film like this, there's a lot of planning um, when you're shooting some stuff in Japan, some stuff in Australia, some stuff on a stage looking like it's outdoors. Um, everything down to the backgrounds you see moving out these windows has to be acquired and planned and put in um, in a way that it looks real. It's a very, very interesting and fine line to walk when you're making a film that exists both in the fanciful space of the comic book origins with bigger-than-life objects and technology, such as this giant creature behind Viper, and also the human reality that you're trying to play in the film, as we were in the love scenes. And it's a real tightrope walk. And yet, at the same time, I don't think these films ever work as well when they give over totally to kind of a comic book and exaggerated level of action nor do they work well when you have none of the fanciful nature. But it is a very interesting walk. I can't tell you when you're making a film of this scale, with the amount of visual effects, music, sound effects, dialogue, dialogue replacement, all of it. Um, it's an incredible um, task to manage all these elements. And you're only as good as the team around you. And in that sense, I couldn't be better because I have as I've made films over the years, I've tried very hard to assemble the very best people around me. Not only in their ability to get something done, but to do it with imagination. Heroes in Western films and heroes in samurai films, heroes very often in mythology, cannot end up with a woman, end up saddled, end up in a way domesticated. And so um, you're always trying to find new ways to keep your hero on the run, running, mobile, un, unhinged. And, um, and I think in many ways, Logan, the point for Logan was not to settle down and find a new girl to love, but was to find himself or find his own will to live again. Generation passing of the torch in the Yashida family as Mariko Yashida takes the helm from her grandfather. Much like in the original Claremont Miller comic, which I so admire, his relationship with Mariko was not one of you know, being a live-in boyfriend or husband, but was one of visiting every so often.